Welcome back. Imagine you're sitting at home, the phone rings, you answer it, and you hear this. Hi, this is Barbara Streisand. I'm calling you to ask for your help in electing Donna Shalala to Congress. I've known Donna for years. She's a person with great integrity. She spent her entire life fighting for progressive values, and she is a strong voice for the rights and empowerment of women. She is exactly the kind of person Miami and the entire county needs in Congress. Come Tuesday, vote for a candidate that will be ready on day one. Please vote for Donna Shalala. That's right. Yento cut a robocall for Donna Shalala. It is a strange year. Or maybe we just need to go back to the way things were. Now, as Democrats push to win back the House, Congressman Ted Deutsch stopped by the studio recently. I started by asking if impeaching, if impeaching the president is going to be part of the argument Democrats will make to convince voters they should be in charge. This isn't, this isn't a, a referendum on impeachment, but I, I do think that what's at stake here is defense of the Constitution, seeking the truth. Those are American values that the people understand. Uh, the Judiciary Committee is the place in Congress that's charged with pursuing this. We need the ability to be able to do it. And if, if Republican House members are going to continue to try to block our pursuit of the truth, then I think they're going to pay a price at the polls. All right, let's turn to the governor's race. Sure. You have not endorsed in this race, correct? Right, that's correct. So if you're having a hard time making up your mind, imagine voters right now having a hard time to make up their mind. It seems uh, if you've got a lot of candidates out there, do you have any predictions as to how you think this is going to play out? I do. I, I predict I, with great certainty that we're going to nominate an incredibly well-qualified, thoughtful, and passionate Democrat who understands that in the state of Florida we have to protect our public schools, we have to safeguard our environment, we have to have economic opportunity for everyone. That's what our nominee is going to be for. And, and I also feel pretty good about saying on the other side, uh, I don't know who's going to win the nomination, but you have either one guy who's described himself as an NRA sellout who saw his job in his current office to push through concealed carry permits at the behest of the NRA, working for them instead of safeguarding the people of Florida. And the other guy that I serve with, I don't know much about, Jim. I don't think most people know much about him, except that he really, really loves the president. And that's not enough to, to uh, get you elected governor. You need to stand for something. Every one of the Democratic candidates does. So you don't, so you don't want to predict gender either for the Democratic nominee then? I, I you know, feel, you as, as I said, you don't I, feel like you, you want to put a gender specific he or she? Uh, well, whoever, which one? whoever wins, okay. he or she right. will be a fantastic so, but, but candidate. But seriously, great appeal to the people from of Florida. A, from a political standpoint, yeah. you don't, do you, you don't think that one candidate has a better chance of winning in November over another? The argument has been that Gwen Graham is more of a moderate. She comes out of North Florida for her congressional seat was, that she can appeal to other voters. Mm -hmm. then, the, then the other counterintuitive side is that you that Philip Levine or Andrew Gillum are more progressive and you need to placate to that part because when you try to nominate, when the Democrats have nominated, I think the last five moderate nominees that mm -hmm. they've had for governor have lost every time. So where do you come down on that? Other than just saying they're all great. I, right, but I, I don't, I, I, I don't think this election is going to be like the previous elections we've had over the past two decades where Republican after Republican has been elected. In this election, if you look at what's happened all around the country, whether it's in Virginia or in Alabama, in Ohio, uh, the turnout in all the Midwestern states, wherever you look, you've seen this passion to try to bring some sanity back to our government. And in Florida, especially, where we have a, a governor who who has refused to, to do anything about so many of the serious problems we face in the state, making things harder for those of us who care about the environment, more difficult for those of us who, who care about our teachers and our kids and our schools. Uh, we're going to have someone who's ready to move in the right direction. And it's not just Democrats. There are Republicans and a huge number of independents who understand that it is time to bring some sanity and some accountability and some respect for our values back to the governor's mansion. You, you've set this perfectly up because the current governor is now running for Senate, Rick Scott. Yeah. Um, 
Is Bill Nelson still running? Because I have a hard time sometimes figuring out if Bill Nelson is, is still actively campaigning. Does yeah. he need to step up his game? You, well, you, you bet he's campaigning. <laughs> he is? Yeah, he's campaigning and he's serving in the Senate. The governor, our governor, uh, the argument that, that you make and, and what you describe is based primarily from the fact that we have a, a governor who has unlimited wealth. Unlimited wealth, by the way, that stems, let's remember, from the fact that he ripped off Medicare, cheated seniors, and paid the largest fine in Medicare history. He's using that wealth that he got from, from ripping off seniors to run these horrible commercials attacking Bill Nelson on the biggest issue of the day right now, which is the algae bloom that's really devastating so many parts of our state. We're in this position because the governor gutted the water management districts, because the governor refuses anyone to let anyone in, in his administration talk about climate change, and because the governor refuses to do anything about septic tanks blocking efforts to inspect so why am he's I, on the side of polluters. Senator Nelson, throughout his entire career, has stood firmly to preserve Florida's beautiful so, environment. So you just made the case for Bill Nelson better than Bill Nelson has ever made the case for himself. I, hey, by the way, I've invited him for two years to come on this show and make that case. Never has. What is, uh, I don't understand the campaign it, that he's running. And I'm not asking you to defend his right. campaign, but it, there's a, a lot of polling and nobody trusts polls, I get it. But the polling has Governor Scott ahead, and it's not just because he's a rich guy who's spending a lot of money, it's because they're not seeing Bill Nelson. Well, it is in large part because he spent a whole lot of his own money broadcasting lies about Senator Nelson. Look, Senator Nelson is, is doing now what he has done uh, for decades, which is working hard for the people of Florida. Uh, I want him to do that. He's out there campaigning. They'll have plenty of TV commercials on, on TV, but in the meantime, uh, those of us who have the opportunity to come sit with you are absolutely gonna make the case because it's pretty darn compelling why it is that our senior senator deserves the, the votes of the people of, this of, the, of our state and should be reelected. And yes, we are still waiting for Bill Nelson to come on this show. All right, I want to bring back my guests, Nancy Ankrum, Rosemary O'Hara, the editorial page editors, respectively, of the Herald and the Sun Sentinel. Your reaction to what you just heard, Rosemary? I think Ted Deutsch is such an effective spokesperson for the Democratic Party, and that if um, the Democrats want to really have a blue wave and win in November, that Nancy Pelosi ought to step down and announce now that she won't run for re-election and let the, the next generation some people like Ted Deutsch uh, run for the leadership. You know, uh, he was so articulate in a way that I have not heard the Democrats speaking in so long. He just nailed the environmental disasters and why they have happened. I think Bill Nelson has, you know, needs to hire him as his as a spokesperson. Let's turn to some of the House races. We're, we're seeing uh, we're seeing three congressional races. You know, districts 25, 26, 27. The seat currently held by Mario Diaz Balart, the seat currently held by Carlos Corbello, and the seat of retiring Congresswoman Ileana Ross Layton. Democrats think in 27 the Ileana seat. They've got their, they've got it made for themselves there. 25 is going to be a harder fight to run seat Mary Diaz Ballard, mm -hmm. and in 26 you have a real fight there as well for Carlos Cabello. Mm -hmm. But let's stay on the on the District 27, the Ileana Ross Layton seat. Yeah, Rosemary was just making the case for the new generation, mm -hmm. and yet the candidate that's leading in that on the Democratic side certainly isn't part of the new generation. It's Donna Shalala, who was part of the Clinton administration. Right, absolutely. And you know, is that we, a problem? It's not a problem given that she's out in front. It's not a problem for Donna. And it might not be a problem for the district that she re represents. But the Democrats have failed to build, being out of power for so long, really failed to build a credible bench. And now that there is that bench, it, and we do see younger, fresher, and I don't, mean, I'm not, I don't mean in an ageist way, but I do mean progressive, less familiar names, uh, candidates who have earned this, they're now being blown out of the water. You know, in uh, Broward, there's not the, the uh, in the primary the kind of competitive races that Miami Dade is seeing. But in the general, it'll it'll be interesting to watch Debbie Wasserman Schultz's race because um, Tim Canova is running as an independent, and the Republicans have some have one good candidate in a three-way race. She she will face a competitive race. Yet another one to watch for. All right, we'll uh, we'll be right back after the break, and we'll continue. 
continue this discussion.